Before we get this video started, I just wanted to say thank you to all of you that have subscribed to my channel. I really appreciate it. Hey guys, today I'm going to continue to talk a little more about my autism, but this time my mum is going to interview me. Um, you had lots of really great comments and likes, so this is um, last week. Um, and your idea was that we would continue, but perhaps do it in conversation. So that's a good idea, isn't it, Peter Dunn? Yeah. So one of the things that you had in your wrist last time, that you wear all the time, is this sunflower band. Why do you wear that? I wear this because it is a symbol of um, autism. Because the sunflower patterns and the green of the band is a special symbol that represents autism and that whoever wears this wristband will need extra help. Most of the time they would need extra help. Sometimes they don't need much help, but it just still represents autism and help with it. So, so when you're out and about, if you go into a, sh a store, a shop, um, then if the people there recognise the sunflower symbol, they'll know to perhaps go a bit slower for you or yeah, yeah. which is what you so, need isn't it yeah so they will um go like talk slower hopefully in my language <laughs> so like slow talking so i can understand what they're saying um maybe ask if i might need a little bit more help um and that sort of stuff so like if i was um uh, going bowling for instance, and I don't know what to do when I get in the bowling centre, um, then they will ask, they will see this wristband and ask if they may need extra help um, and ask if I know what I'm doing, if I need extra help or that sort yeah. of stuff. Really. So it's a good thing. So stick it back in your wrist, otherwise you're going to sit and fiddle with it, I know. Yeah. I know. Too much. Okay. <laughs> So let's think about some of the. Let's just think a bit more about that when you're in a in a store, you're out and about, and your people are talking to you and talking at you. And one of the things you spoke about in your film last week was how it can make you. Um, I can't remember the phrase you used, but that's too much information in your head is difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm thinking that as um, one of the things I know about your autism is it's difficult for you to to what I would say process what's going on very quickly. Does that make sense? Yeah. So some of what you have is also your, your language is a bit disordered. So sometimes you get your words back to front. Mm -hmm. But that, that's part of your brain not being able to put things in the right order. So what, how, what's it feel like when lots of people are telling you lots of things? Um, well, when lots of people tell me loads of things, um, my words, it bungles in my brain. Yes, it bungles. <laughs> They're my words. Um, that it's basically loads of stuff going at me full speed in my brain. I can't cope with it. And then I have to sort of write it on my calendar, like I said mm. last video. And if you've had lots of information, if somebody's giving you directions to go somewhere, so you walk down the road, you need to turn left, and then you'll pass a shop, and then over the road you need to cross. And if we, we keep telling you that, you can't keep up with what we're talking about. That's true, isn't it? Yeah. Even what I've just said, you're not really sure what I was talking <laughs> about. Exactly. Um, and sometimes people don't recognise that in you, do they? They think because you're smiling and nodding and looking engaged, yeah. they don't realise that you haven't got a clue what might be yeah. going on. Yeah, sometimes I just don't really have a clue of what's going on, but I act like I do. So I just smile and nod like, yeah. I, I, I totally know what you're saying when in my head I'm going no what, what, what did you even say I, I, don't, no. get, I don't get anything tricky isn't it you're yeah. like the penguins in Madagascar you smile and wave <laughs> yeah. and just smile and so, wave so some of the other things about your autism I think you talked about were um, that you need to repeat things over and over 
Did yeah. you talk about that last time in your film? I can't uh, remember, but that is one of your things. Me neither, but probably. Okay. I talked so about a lot in my last film. You did talk about a lot. <laughs> um, so you repeat things. Sometimes you repeat behaviour, don't you? You repeat... Um, I repeat saying stuff over again yeah. most of the time. Yeah. Which I can't really help. No. I just say it over and over again. <laughs> Yeah. Just like you have. Just like that, yeah. <laughs> so, so when we have conversations, you have to tell me something three or four times. Yeah. Repeating it. Yeah. Even though I know I've heard it. Yeah. And how do people respond to you when that happens? What do um, you think? Some people get quite annoyed because they repeat the same thing over and over again even though they actually heard it. So most people get annoyed. Mm. How does that make you feel? Frustrated because I can't help it, mm. and it's just who you, I am. It's so you know you're doing it. No. Oh, I, I okay. Don't. You don't always know, but uh, you're aware that you do. Sometimes I know. Sometimes I don't. Okay, that's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Does it feel weird when you realise you're repeating yourself? Sometimes. Okay. And you do it all the time, don't you, on all sorts of things? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. That's a that's a funny thing. That's a Rachel thing. And then sometimes, as well as repeating things you say, you need to repeat actions. When you were yeah. little, you used to do that a lot more, didn't you? Yeah. I used to have loads of weird habits when mm. I was a kid. You call them tics. Do you remember the one yeah. where you scratched your hands all the time? Yeah, that was painful, but I couldn't really help it much. Do you remember how you did it? I got, I got out of it. You kind of did a thing and you had to keep doing... Yeah, I kept doing that, yeah. that. It was a special way. Nice. And what yeah. happened when we interrupted you? You made you stop. What would you then do? I remember. remember then, You'd no. start again. You'd do it all again. You had to keep doing it. That was one of them hands. And then you had a funny thing with your shoulder at one point. And not so much now, but there are some behaviours you, you repeat, aren't there? Yeah. I did have this behavioural bite in nails, but most people have a behavioural oh, bite in their nails that. when they're um, in yeah. their kids. When their kids the age. difference with you is, though, that... But I got out of a habit with some stuff. You yes, did. Down at your nose nails. Yes. The difference with you is when you've got a habit like that, if we try and stop it, you have to start again. You can't just stop doing it. It's not yeah. like when I bite my nails. You go stop and go, okay. You have to keep doing it because you're yeah. repeating. That's a weird thing. Yeah. Weird to other people. <laughs> not so weird for you. Yeah, not weird for me. No. Weird to you guys and mum and yeah. dad. So. Yeah. yeah. Just different. Just part of being Rachel. I wonder yeah. what else What else um, did you talk about in your film last week? Do you remember about your autism? What we could talk about now? Um... Without watching my film, or without watching my um, video over again, um, I probably won't remember. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So one right. of the things I know you talked about was making <laughs> friends, and you find that really, really tricky and really difficult. And that's not just because you're not confident. And some people are just shy and find that difficult. But yours, yours is a bit to do with your autism. How does your autism affect you making friends? That's a big question. But. Um, I have a feeling that my autism um, with making friends is, uh, I think it's quite bad because mm -hmm. it sort of stops me from making friends sometimes because of, um, I get so shy and nervous I barely make friends. Mm -hmm. But I spent the whole last year at college without any friends at college, at, in my class. I don't know. Okay, not in your class, class, but around outside you. Because I was too yes, scared so. to even talk to anyone in my mm -hmm. class. So that And then at the end of the year, then I made a friend. At, right at the end oh, of the right, year. Right, just before lockdown. Yeah, just before lockdown, <laughs> I made a friend. Yeah, so it took you so, six months, really, yeah. to find somebody. So it takes you a bit longer than everybody else. A lot longer, yeah. Yeah, that's so. Quite a lot. That's, that's difficult. And what about how you. Um, you know, some of the some of the way that if if you were with other other young people your age, like you're eighteen, if you're with other eighteen year olds, do you think you fit in with them or is there something different about you or um in my perspective everything's mm. different about me being eighteen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can you tell me a bit more about that? Um not really. Okay. Not really. I wonder what, what sort of thing is different. Um, do you like the same sort of music and film and TV? Not as usual 18 year olds would watch, no. Okay. Um, okay. Well, okay. Do you want to talk a bit more about that or not so much? 
Um, I don't really know what to talk about then. Okay, well, I'm just wondering about what's different then about what the sorts of things you might want to watch or do. I wonder what you do that's different at home when you're relaxing. Well, you don't go out to the pub, do you, with friends no. and things? That's what normal 18 year olds would, yeah, go out to the pub. Um, and that's not even because of. With their of the... friends, and I, I, I can't do that. Well, we've got the pandemic on at the minute, so uh, that's yeah, tricky. At, at the minute, the pandemic. Okay. But if, if but that wasn't happening... If that wasn't happening, I naturally wouldn't be able to do that. Because? Because, first of all, I can't drive, so I can't do it anyway. <laughs> so you'd have to get a lift, but that's okay. Yeah. Some of your, some 18-year-olds are still into lift. Second of all, I possibly wouldn't be able to arrange it either with my friends or mm -hmm. anything like that. Okay, because that so requires quite a lot of different kind of thinking. And it also requires communication, mm -hmm. and my communication skills aren't very good. Well, actually, Rachel, I beg to differ, because... We're having quite a good conversation. You're my family. It's <laughs> easy with you. Okay. Not with my okay. friends. They're a bit different. Okay. But, you, but your communication skills are really good because you've done a number of things on your YouTube videos. Um, and you've done that, some of them, apart from today. I know Dad sits in the room, but you do them all on yeah. your own. You plan them all by yourself. And then you do the thing all on your own. And people understand exactly what you're doing. I also know... Um, well, I think I think they understand. Well, your viewers don't know, but you you script everything and you've got it all written out really, really well, and you're yeah. very, very clear when you speak on the camera. You're very clear. People do know. So your communication skills are are probably a bit better than you think they are. I take about three hours since Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Three hours of planning my YouTube video a week. So then I spend quite a long time. So, some people may think it's not that hard to make YouTube video. It's quite easy, but none of that's true. <laughs> none of that's true. Not Things that always look it's, easy to other people, which were always really difficult. Yeah, making a YouTube video can be quite hard at mm. some times. Mm. I don't other understand. times, yeah, Mum says she doesn't know how to do it. <laughs> Although I think it's quite easy now because I've been doing it for about a month now. That's right. That's so. I've, I've been making this YouTube video, um, upgrading my um, channel, making it look pretty, making it bold, it's that way more people will come to my channel, see my videos, subscribe, uh, like them, share them, I also make thumbnails. And now people are getting to know a little bit more about you. Yeah. So talking about how you do that on Wednesday and Thursday and so on. One of the things about you and your autism is you're very routine. You are the queen of routine. <laughs> you are the queen of lists and the queen of organised. Last week you showed a little bit on your calendar how you managed manage yourself. But yeah. here's the thing. I'd forgotten we were doing this today. And I've done, not done my hair properly and I've not got my makeup on and I'm probably not wearing the right clothes. So I'm having a bit of a nightmare because this isn't how I like to be. But if I'm going to be on the camera... Um, there is no way, no way we're going to change the timing of doing this because <laughs> it's Rachel's thing and it's on your routine and it's in your calendar. I always so, tell you, I do it every Saturdays, like every, every Saturday. single Saturdays. I video this, I edit it and then I make a thumbnail, I post it, I put the thumbnail on the video to make it look stand out and look more pretty. And you make sure so, that you've done all your other jobs, you make sure that it's all sort of yeah. ready because you've already written the script the other yeah. day and the other day if I asked you could you go and do the washing up you'd tell me no because I've got to go it's on my list I've got to go and do my writing up my script for my YouTube yeah. or if I say could you empty the dishwasher you might say to me no because right now I've got to go and clear out the chickens so one of the things about your yeah. autism is that you have to do the things in the way that you've decided and planned that's different to me because I will just change my routine all the time, won't I? Yeah, you can be quite spontaneous sometimes. I can be very spontaneous a lot of the time. <laughs> yeah. What's that feel like to live with me when you've got autism? Stressing, because <laughs> sometimes you say, you suddenly say, we're going to high, and then you suddenly say, we're going back home now. Like, what, 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 what do I do then? What? So, <laughs> but I'm meant to pack my things. But what we, going, remember, what? what we remember to do is say to you, we're going at such and such a time and we're coming back. Yeah. Sometimes that's not enough warning. For me, I need a specific time and a specific day so that way I can stick it in my calendar mm -hmm. and I know exactly this is the day we go home, this is the day we do this, or this, this is what 
like us to do before we go? But can I pack the stuff? Can I tell your subscribers a little secret about you? If I no said to you, if I said to you, yeah, but Rachel, I'll tell you what we're doing. We're going to Starbucks and you can have the cookies and cream. Like that? You'd say, yeah, all right, I'll go and get my shoes. So you can be spontaneous. Yeah, but I love cooking and cream Starbucks. <laughs> They're like my ultimate yeah. favourite Starbucks. But sometimes you're spontaneous. And then sometimes I say, oh, we're going to go and visit such and such. And so I'm not coming because I'm, I've got to do yeah. my, Some, my class. Um, sometimes I can move. Um, my things on my calendar okay. to a different yeah. point so that way I can go out and get Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> so you can only do the things you want to do. <laughs> yeah. and, but if my calendar's full mm. up with stuff and I don't have any space to move it, then this is all I can do. Yeah. I, I can't move it anywhere else. It's all full up. That feels quite overwhelming, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. I'll be watching. I can see that. Then I see that sometimes you've got too many things yeah. on your list. Like for today, um, after this video, I'll be, I've got the thing on my um, calendar to edit the video, to post the video, to put the thumbnail on the video, make the thumbnail. I've got all that and that, that will take at least up till tea time to do all that. Yeah. So, so, so and, and then it's problematic for you, Rach, because um, yesterday was really, really super crazy hot, really hot. And I know that you had in your calendar, you were going to clean out the chickens and do stuff. So what did I suggest to you the day before? Um, to get up at seven o'clock or half seven i think it was half seven and um and then i can get up get changed and then do the chickens early in the morning yeah. um before it gets hot because it would usually get hot about um midday so in the afternoon that's the hottest temperature it will get yeah so i had to look at i looked ahead for you so one of the things you have to learn all these things don't need to like think right although i've planned that I might need to look ahead to check that I can still do that. That's a problem. Can be can't it? It's tricky. Yeah. So you have to think other people might not think like that. Yeah. Crystal always calls people um, like me neurotypical. Is it neurotypical? Yeah, that's a non autistic <laughs> person. Um. Whereas a an autistic person would be neurodivergent. <laughs> so a neurotypical wow. person would would kind of just be able to cope with making those sorts of changes. A neurodivergent person might need to keep an eye on the weather two or three days ahead and keep, yeah. keep changing what's thinking, oh, I may not be able to clean out my chickens at 12 o'clock because it's going to be 33 degrees. Yeah. That's like crazy hot. Well, today, um, well, yeah, today, um, I, put, I looked on um, my weather app, mm -hmm. checked what the degrees are, and then I put those degrees for the next week um, in my calendar for all day. And then um, I've got on the top exactly what type of temperature it's actually going to be. So I know exactly what type of temperature, so, what exactly clothes I have to put on, if it's like a strappy t-shirt like that, that sort of stuff. So, so here's, here's the thing, a neurotypical person wouldn't have to do that. So you have a lot of work to do, don't you? Mm. Mm. And if you didn't do that, then it'd be a problem because you might, if you've forgotten to do that, and you decide on Monday because you've already thought through what you're going to be wearing, that you're wearing a woolly jumper and a big pair of jeans or something, and then I said to you, but Rachel, it's going to be 29 degrees. That would feel a bit overwhelming for you, wouldn't it? Like, you can get changed as like crisis. <laughs> the, drama, yeah. the drama goes on in your head. Yeah. And people don't realise that, don't you? People don't realise a lot of things about me. Okay, because you have other things that people don't realise. I said quite a lot of things that people don't realise um, in my last mm. video. You did. I know something yeah. people don't realise about you. They might think you're being a moody and stroppy <laughs> madam. But that might be because, <laughs> maybe you are, no, maybe I'm you not. are, but that might be because That's you're not. having to think and process things and that you don't really understand what's going on. Yeah. So while we're all laughing and joking because the funny thing's happened, <laughs> you might not be laughing and joking because you don't understand the funny thing that's happened, so it looks yeah. like you're being grumpy. That happens sometimes. I like, I like talking to you today, Rachel, we should do this again. Do you think yeah. people will like, like this video? Yeah, yeah, well, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. Thanks. Thank you, Rachel. You're welcome. <laughs> Check out another one of my videos here. If you like this video, can you please hit the like button and subscribe? Thank you.